to welcome to our webinar. I'm very excited to show you um, how to write a personal statement for, for university applications. Obviously, like I said, um, this is more for UK university applications. Um, that's that's specifically the, uh, the one I have the most experience with um, helping students with undergraduate applications to various UK universities. Uh, but we're going to talk about many other universities as well, US, Canada, um, yeah, all, all um, uh, universities that my my tutors uh, at Threshold Education have experience of, of helping people with uh, very successfully too. So uh, once again, yeah, if you want to keep any questions, uh, if you want to ask any questions, then um, you feel free to put them in the chat or there'll be some time towards the end. So uh, you can simply um, unmute yourself later and, and ask me directly. Um, right. So first of all, who am I and why should you trust my opinion? The opinion of potentially just some stranger off the Internet. Um, so my name is Dananjay Talwar, uh, to introduce myself fully, uh, or Dananjay Talwar, <laughs> depending on where you're from. Um, I'm an alumnus of St. Paul's School. Uh, that's a top, a top boys school in the UK in um, southwest London. Uh, where I went from 2005 till 2010. Um, I had a fantastic time there. Then I took a gap year. Uh, actually spent some time in Mumbai teaching French during that gap year. Uh, before then, going to the University of Cambridge, I was at Magdalen College, um, right near the centre, um, in Cambridge from 2011 to 2015. I studied French and Italian there. Um, and had a fantastic time. I'm still in touch with uh, my supervisors. In fact, that's how that's how much of a positive influence and impact they had on my life. Um, uh, it was a fantastic experience. I got to spend my year abroad um, in Rome, my Erasmus year, um, a long time ago now, unfortunately. Um, but uh, yeah, it was it was something that I really enjoyed uh, and really benefited from. Um, and I suppose you could say that I'm reasonably um, passionate about languages as well, that I quite like them. I've, I've gone on to, to learn over 20 others uh, to various levels. Um, and of course, that is, as a language tutor, uh, something that I really uh, enjoy teaching as well. Um, so for the last three years or slightly more than three years, I've been a full time private tutor teaching languages, of course, various different languages. Um, if you've got that that much passion um obviously you, you'd want to share that with as many students as possible um and I'm also the director of Threshold Education so that's a tutoring agency and educational consulting agency um we help uh, a wide range of different uh of different students uh for a variety of subjects as well we have over 150 tutors which I'll expand on more uh later um yeah but it's been a very rewarding experience and I started up Threshold Education as I wanted to positively impact the lives of, of many more students. And I realized that I simply couldn't cover every single subject uh, at every single level by myself. Um, so me personally, of course, I've looked at many different uh, personal statements um, and I've helped students to gain entrance successfully to the University of Oxford, the University of Cambridge. I've actually helped them with every single step of that process. Uh, so not just personal statements uniquely, but also interview practice, uh, putting together the UCAS application. Um, uh, yeah, admissions tests specifically for Oxbridge, even identifying the university or the college, which is usually the first step of the process um, and preparation. So guidance on how to prepare and um, what extra reading they should, uh, they should uh, get through as well. Um, and of course, I've helped students into many other UK universities as well, not just Oxford, not just Cambridge, but plenty of others as well. Um, I have looked at uh, personal statements for, say, the US or other universities in different countries, too. But it has been primarily, in my case, um, more UK based. Um, right. So that's my my background and my expertise. Um, and that's why I'm excited to to go through um, a personal statement and what makes a good personal statement with all of you here today. So first thing is, I mean, we're going to go through roughly from the start. So obviously, people attending, you have uh, different levels of experience. You may be at different stages in the process, too. Uh, so some of you may feel that you're very close to finalizing your personal statement and you've just got a few doubts about specific areas. Others may really be, be struggling to get started at all um, and feel completely confused or clueless about the entire thing. 
Um, so we're going to go through all of that. Um, I'll show you the aim, structure of the personal statement, what, what uh, you're trying to achieve through the personal statement. Um, and I also take you through my template. Uh, so everybody who's here, everybody who's signed up uh, using that registration form, uh, we will email you um, for free my personal statement template uh, and guide that accompanies it, as well as this recording. Um, yeah, so you can uh, benefit from that as much as possible too. So what actually is the personal statement? Well, it's obviously one of the key elements of the UK university application process. Um, as well as for foreign universities too. Um, the other uh, the other parts of the application process would involve interviews, admissions tests, more so for Oxbridge. Uh, you do have to do an interview, say, for some other UK universities, such as UCL, uh, but they tend to be less formal uh, and there's far less preparation uh, required, really. Um, identifying a university and college, which is often the first step, something that we've helped students with uh, threshold education as well. Uh, preparation and reading and the UCAS application form itself. Those would be the other elements of the university application process for the UK, at least. Uh, but the personal statement, I would honestly say, is one of the most important of them, if not the biggest, um, in my opinion. Um, Universities will look at all of this information together. Uh, so they're not going to, yeah, they're not going to look uniquely just at your personal statement. They'll look at the references from school, any work that you've had to submit to your UCAS, your full UCAS application as well. Uh, remember that for um, for um, uh, Cambridge, there's an actual, there's an additional questionnaire that you've got to submit, uh, which you get a week extra to do. Um, so that's after the deadline, after 16th of October, you'd have an extra questionnaire. It used to be the supplementary questionnaire was called, but um, yeah, I think the name itself has changed. The form remains the same. Um, so they ask you to submit a little bit of extra information, which you'd have a week to complete. So you'd have that, uh, you'd have to do that by 23rd of October for this year. Um, so it's very important to have a timeline and to bear in mind the specific dates for all of these uh, so that yeah, you're not uh, preparing. You're, you're not preparing blind. You've got a clear plan, um, a plan of action in place um, for the personal statement and for other parts of the application. So for the UK, um, of course, applications, particularly for undergraduate uh, courses, will go through a body called UCAS. Uh, UCAS um, actually is the body through which you would submit uh, the application itself in the first place. Um, and they also help with postgraduate applications. You can submit postgraduate applications through UCAS as well, which I'll touch on later, but less so. Uh, for undergraduate applications to UK universities, all of your personal statement, all of the application details themselves will be submitted through UCAS. Um, and you'd have to submit the, the personal statement through the UCAS form online. Um, so when you do so, we realize that there's a limit of 4,000 characters, not words, but characters, or 47 lines, whichever is smaller, for the personal statement. Um, and as I keep saying, the deadlines are really important because a common mistake that people make is that they don't realize um, that there are, uh, yeah, that there are uh, clear deadlines by which they have to submit this, or they're not working towards those deadlines. Um, they don't have a clear time plan they may simply be going through their personal statement without an idea of when the first draft is going to be submitted, when the second draft will be submitted, uh, when they're going to finalize their application details, etc. Those deadlines, uh, please do make a note of this if, um, if you're unaware of them, are 16th of October this year, 2023, for Oxford and Cambridge. Their deadline is typically uh, quite a long time before the general deadline, uh, for UK universities, for applications to undergraduate courses in the UK. Um, so 16th of October, 2023 for Oxbridge this year, which is one day later than last year. Um, and 31st of January, 2024, for most of the rest of the courses, the vast majority of courses, uh, so non-Oxbridge uh, courses, the deadline would be 31st January, 2024. Again, do be aware if you're planning to apply a bit later, if you're going to apply in the next academic cycle or the following year, 
uh, these dates do change around a little bit. So previous year, it was 15th of October for Oxbridge. It generally has been, actually, uh, 15th of October. And it was 25th of January for um, for the rest of the courses. Uh, so you still have to monitor these dates. Um, you have to be, yeah, very on top of them, very aware of them. Um, the last thing is that it's got to reflect you. It's got to reflect you as a person. So I'm obviously going to show you and send around a personal statement template, which I've used successfully with, with many, many different students. Um, and I've helped students to gain entrance to Oxbridge, uh, not just for modern languages or for language related courses, but for many, many other subjects as well. Uh, yeah, so a, a wide variety of courses. Um, yeah, from, from land economy to archaeology and anthropology. Um, so, of course, I, I will give you these standardized templates, but it's important to remember that they are standardized. And the personal statement has to reflect the person applying, has to reflect the student. It's really, really important that it does reflect the student. Um, otherwise, it won't come across as authentic. It won't come across as genuine and it won't sell you or, or yeah, or represent you in the best possible light. Right. So what is the aim of the personal statement? So, well, the, the personal statement has to showcase the personality of the student. This is it's even more important, actually, for U.S. applications, because U.S. universities, of course, in the U.S., if you're studying in the U.S., typically you'll specialize a lot later in your course. You'll, uh, you won't apply to study just one specific subject, unlike the U.K., uh, so personality will be will be a big part of uh, of your application as well. What are your interests? What are your extracurricular achievements? Um, uh, even for the UK, personality plays plays some role. Of course, the the university professors, the teachers, they want to they want to work with students who they'll enjoy working with. Um, yeah, they they love that that rapport. That's why they've become lecturers. Uh, they're extremely passionate about their subjects. Um, the second and third points are perhaps the most important. Uh, so in the personal statement, you have to obviously communicate why you want to study your chosen course um, and to make it very clear that it's not just a random choice by any stretch of the imagination, um, but you've got real interest in that subject area, particularly in the UK, where you will tend to study something fairly specific, often uh, well, sometimes vocational from the start. Um, and you need to show why you'd be suitable to study your chosen course. So not just why you want to study it, but what makes you good at that subject? Why would you be capable of studying that subject at a high level? Because obviously university courses are demanding, um, and particularly for the most academic courses, the most academic universities, Oxford, Cambridge, UCL, Imperial, many others, um, you really need to communicate that you'd be able to to keep up with the course itself, because that is one of the key factors that admissions professors will look at. Overall, if I had to summarize it in two words, the two things that you really want to communicate in your personal statement are passion and ability. Now, out of the two, it'd be interesting to take a survey, although we're not gonna do that now. Um, people, students uh, I've worked with tend to put the emphasis on ability. Uh, particularly those applying to, say, top universities like Oxbridge, they're often intimidated. They might feel that, you know, I need to be really, really good at my subject. I need to have all the answers. Otherwise, they're not going to let me in. Actually, actually, though, I put a bit more emphasis on passion. Um, if even even Oxbridge professors, if they expected you to know all the answers, they'll, there would be nothing to teach you then. <laughs> would they? So um, they're not expecting perfection. Um, in fact, communicating a passion, showing what you've done outside of the school curriculum. Uh, again, particularly for those top universities, extra reading that you've done, extra courses that you've attended, um, extra research, it could be, it could be many things, is really vital. And that's what often tends to make the difference. Okay, so a few more tips before we get into the personal statement template and guide itself. Um, a few more tips based on common mistakes. Uh, simply common things that we've seen that students uh, do that that lets them down in the personal statement and and just doesn't allow them to to present themselves in the best possible light um, and in the strongest way that they could represent themselves. First thing is that every word counts. 
uh, every word or even, as we said, even every character, because there's the 4,000 character limit for UK personal statements um, for undergraduate applications. Um, what I mean by this is, and this is a common error in personal statements, uh, you've really got to make sure that every character sells you as much as possible. You need to get rid of any characters that are not essential to your personal statement, any words uh, that are not, or phrases that are not contributing anything um, at all, any extra um, extra words that are superfluous that don't really add in any meaning. Uh, things like, I, I don't know, I'm... Um, the point at which I really started to become interested in blank, you could just shorten all of that to, I really, uh, I really developed interest in blank. You, you don't need any of those extra, extra words, any of those extra characters. And because there is such a tight character limit, which people often struggle with, um, you really need to get rid of absolutely any characters that are not necessary in any way. Obviously, remember that writing a personal statement is usually an iterative process you're not just going to write it once and that's it done uh you're going to go through many different drafts instead uh and this is how our tutors generally work as well um so generally the student will submit a will do a first draft uh which often tends to be way over the, the character limit it might be seven thousand eight thousand characters i've seen even more than that to be honest because at the start the student is generally getting their ideas down on paper and simply deciding what it is that they want to put in their personal statement. Um, then over subsequent drafts, they'll tend to narrow it down. They'll get rid of any unnecessary content and they'll make it fit the requirements for, for submission. Uh, but normally what happens is you'll, you'll do a first draft as a student, submit it to your teachers in school or a tutor as well. Um, the tutor or the teachers will give some feedback. Then you do a second draft subsequently incorporating some of that feedback and then so on and so forth. You then go back to the teachers or tutor with your second draft. They give you further advice and you'd carry on going in this way. Um, yeah, so uh, of course, over time, you will manage to cut down those drafts. Generally, at the start, it tends to be extremely wordy for most students. Um, and then by the end, students start to get the hang of um, cutting down on absolutely any extra characters. But that's one of the main tips for personal statements. Second one seems obvious. You need to sell yourself and your achievements, but I've included it because many students don't do this. And a common reason why is because they they feel hesitant. Um, uh, they feel as if they're almost bragging. Um, but absolutely, if you've won first prize in an essay competition, then you need to mention that you've won first prize in an essay competition. Don't write my school put me forward for an essay competition in which I performed well. No, of course not. You need to sell yourself. You need to make your application stand out, show what separates you from, from the rest of the crowd. You need to say, well, preferably you want to show proactiveness as well. So you don't want to write, my school put me forward. Uh, you, you really want to say, um, you know, um, I, I, I went for a, I volunteered for an essay competition in which I came first out of, several thousand people, for example. Don't be shy about putting yourself in absolutely the best light possible. Similarly, of course, you need to show what makes you stand out from others. Uh, we wanna avoid cliches. Common ones include, I've always been interested in this subject since I was five years old. Um, yeah, it, it's not really going to sell you. It's not going to make you stand out from others because these are cliches that any person could write. Um, Lastly, write with passion and make it memorable, of course. I mean, this is particularly true about the start and end of any personal statement. Uh, those are the first things that anybody will read uh, and the last thing that will that will uh, be left with them as well, that will stick in their, in their minds. Um, but yeah, of course, you don't want to say, um, I read this book. You want to say, I was so inspired by my, by my uh, study of this subject at school that... Um, that I decided to, to proactively go in and do further research or read this book. Obviously, we'd save a bit of characters. We wouldn't make it that long. Uh, but that's that's an example of the passion that you want to convey. OK, so those are some common pitfalls. Um, but how can you structure your personal statements? So over the years, working with many different students, um, I've come up with a template, actually, which has served a lot of students very well. 
so many students have um have really benefited from this and i've used this template actually with students who've achieved entrance to both oxford and cambridge and again not just for my subjects well not just for modern languages which i studied myself at cambridge um but for many other subjects too um so of course this is a standardized template um and the guide that i'll show you um obviously reiterate this but you need to tailor it to your own situation to your own goals your own specific achievements as well um because it is it is a generic template um and you cannot just simply copy it and paste this in any way and expect that to work on its own uh but it's it provides a structure it provides guidance which has worked very very well uh for many students um so of course, you may well want to switch around some of these, uh, some of the different parts of these personal statement templates. You don't have to rigidly follow what I've written here. Uh, the aim is, again, to communicate you in the best way possible. Um, but particularly for those who are struggling to write one particular section, um, or who are just not really not sure how to structure it, how to get started at all, this should be really, really helpful. Um, and of course, I will send this around. Um, to everyone. So you'd start off with the introduction. Um, the introduction and conclusion, um, I would say, don't need to be more than a few lines, but they are very important. That's the first thing that anybody will read, the first impression that you make on any admissions officer, um, and the last thing that sticks with them too. So you want to make it punchy. You want to make it catchy, memorable, um, showing your passion, um, yeah, and you want to avoid cliches as well, particularly in the introduction. Many people do start off with, I see it every time, students writing, um, I've been interested in this subject since I was three years old. If it's not authentic, if it's not genuine, it won't really, it won't really sell, it won't work. Um, so you've got to represent yourself uh, in the best possible light by avoiding those cliches, giving something that's genuine, authentic to you, but also still emphatic. For the conclusion, I would always round off by saying something about how much you're looking forward to studying that subject at university. Um, yeah, and and why, and you're looking forward to carrying on uh, with the achievements that you've that you've accomplished so far at university. Um, yeah, of course, university are professors they're looking for for passionate students, um, people who would enjoy the course. The sections in the middle, of course, are vital as well. So why you want to study your chosen subject, fairly self-explanatory, but um, yeah, what, what, it is, what is it that made you choose this subject? Why have you chosen, say, to study law or economics at university rather than anything else? Even if you've applied for, say, modern languages, why have you chosen French and Italian, for example, rather than, say, uh, Spanish and Portuguese? Um, that's It's very important. You really need to convey interest in your particular chosen subjects. Um, it cannot come across as a random choice in any way that you're just studying the subject out of default. Um, yeah. And then what experience you have in studying your chosen subject. So this is, of course, particularly for those who've studied their subject before at school. If you're applying for economics and you've studied it at school, say up to A level or for IB, um, absolutely mention that. And not just don't just mention that, but say what you got out of it. What did you learn from that? What aspects of studying economics at school did you enjoy? What did it teach you about economics? What did it make you curious about that you'd love to learn about further at university? Um, yeah, uh, if you haven't studied that subject before, say if you're uh, applying to study, say philosophy, linguistics, courses that are generally, or law, courses that uh, generally, um, people will start from scratch at university. Uh, they wouldn't have studied it necessarily before at school level. Then of course, you can minimize that section of the personal statement um, or even cut it out entirely if you really feel uh, feel it's best. Um, but if you've studied that subject before, I would definitely mention what you've got out of it, what sparked your curiosity, your interest in that subject. Um, and don't just list the things that you've done. That's very important too. You don't wanna say, I did one, I did two, I did three. Make sure you list it, then give what, what you actually got out of it. So analyze what you what you learned from that, from that experience. Um what it what it was that really interested you um about it. 
uh, perhaps what struck you or surprised you um, during that that uh, uh, reading that novel or reading that um, um, piece of research that you did about your your chosen subject. These ones in the middle, what you've done to demonstrate passion in your chosen subject and what you've done to demonstrate ability in your chosen subject, they're of course absolutely vital, um, arguably the most important sections of the entire personal statement. Um, again, I would put slightly more emphasis on the passion side, actually, because university professors will recognize that, you know, you can be as talented as you want, but if you don't have the uh, passion, you're not going to do that well uh, at the university course. Um, and each year we do see students who are really, really good on paper, but personality wise, perhaps they're not the right fit. Um, perhaps they come across as arrogant or know-it-alls during the interview. It can happen because they have such high ability, but they lack passion. And so they may not get that that um, that entrance um, that they were expecting. Um, I mean, of course, as, as experienced tutors, we know that it's not um, it's not ability on its own that sells. It's, it's passion, is which is absolutely vital. And if you don't have that, uh, if you can't convey that, that makes it much harder. Um, of course, when you're talking about the passion you have for your subject, you need to illustrate it with examples. So what have you done proactively outside of the classroom um, to show that passion, to pursue that interest? Have you signed up for courses? Have you done clubs within your school? Um, you know, did you did you study up? Uh, did you join economics club? Um, how did you find it? What kind of things did you discuss? How did it trigger or, or carry on triggering your passion for economics? Um, and again, when you're talking about your ability and your chosen subject, we want specific examples, specific illustrations. I that which essay, which essay did you do that got a that got a top mark? Um, what research did you do that was hugely praised by your teacher? Um, have you written articles that, that went down extremely well in your in your school magazine? Anything else that you've done that specifically shows that you'll be able to cope with the demands of potentially difficult and stringent university courses? Then you'll see the small section towards the bottom called extracurricular interests or activities. This obviously really depends on where you're applying to. So this template, um, it's slightly more with the UK in mind, so slightly more for undergraduate applications to UK universities. But of course, it could be tailored for, for many other things uh, as well. Um, and for UK universities specifically, and I was told this um, directly in my interview for Cambridge, um, they really don't put much emphasis on extracurricular interests and activities. Um, it's a section that you should include in your personal statement. Again, by default, that's the standard thing. But a small state, a small, um, a small section would be enough. Um, you don't have to expand on it in much detail because it's not really going to make a difference to your application. Um, yeah, and again, we, we've heard this from the horse's mouth. So from top universities directly informing uh, informing us of this as well. Um, for US universities, for, so for foreign universities, it can be a totally different situation. For the US, again, I'll, I'll touch a bit more on this later, but um, absolutely, they want to know about your extracurricular interests, activities. They want to know if you're a basketball player, um, if you've joined debating society, um, if you're, I don't know, a chess wizard, um, because all of this is important to them. They want people who are going to fit in well on the campus. Um, and obviously that's linked to the fact that you tend to specialize a lot later uh, if you're studying in the US. For the UK, though, particularly for the top, the most academic universities, they really don't care so much about the extracurricular sections. If you can link it back to your subject, then sure, that will present you in a good light again. But otherwise, um, it doesn't really matter. Um, this is the guide, which, of course, um, as promised, I'll send around and which just... Um, yeah, it illustrates and shows you what I've just talked about now. Um, of course, this um, this structure itself, that is literally how I would structure each section of the personal statement. And the guide gives some guidance as to how to fill in each section of the personal statement. But obviously, uh, as I said, you've got to tailor it to yourself. Um, you can't follow this rigidly like it's some kind of a formula. It's extremely useful 
um, but you need to tailor it to your own situation. Uh, you need to make it apply to you as best as possible. And that's obviously something we can help with too. Um, right, so let's talk briefly about uh, how postgraduate applications differ. So for postgraduate applications in the UK as well, um, they're less, much less standardized. So one key difference is that, of course, in the UK, you can only apply to a maximum of five different uh, of five different courses, five different universities as well. And you've got to choose, this is for undergraduate applications uh, rather, and you've got to choose between Oxford or Cambridge. You cannot apply to both of those universities. Um, the other thing is that, um, obviously very important information. Uh, when you're applying to universities for undergraduate application in the UK, you're just going to do one personal statement. So you'll write one personal statement, which you send for each of those courses. Uh, for that reason, obviously, we recommend um, not, not uh, varying the courses too much. You don't want to apply to, say, a study law, but also anthropology. That, that would be difficult. <laughs> It'd be difficult to write one personal statement uh, that's suitable for, for both of those courses. Um, yeah, so you can't really tailor, well, you're writing one personal statement. It's got to cover all of those courses that you're applying for, really, as much as you can. Um, for postgraduate applications in the UK, it's a different story. You'll write different personal statements for each course and each university that you're applying to. So obviously, that has the benefit that you can tailor each and every personal statement um, the drawback, I suppose, the negative side is that it's a lot more time consuming. Um, and you do have to make sure that each personal statement is different um, and that you fit the requirements that each university is asking you for. Um, again, you can submit. So personal statements for postgraduate applications can go through UCAS, uh, but often uh, the specific details, application dates, requirements, even the submission procedure depends and comes down to the university itself. So it's a lot less standardized. And different universities have different requirements on these as well. The University of Oxford for postgraduate applications in the UK, for example, requires uh, quite a lot, uh, uh, quite a big uh, personal statement, uh, much lengthier than other universities. Obviously, if you're applying for postgrad applications, you'll have done an undergraduate degree normally. Um, and Often postgrad courses themselves will be more vocational. You'll have a clearer idea of where you want to be after your course. So you'd reflect on that extra experience. You'd include this in your personal statement. And you'd want to talk more about your further career aspirations and why specifically you want to specialize in that area. US universities, of course, it's a big, it's a big topic area. But briefly, uh, to touch on some of the differences, Again, as with postgraduate courses, postgraduate applications within the UK, um, you can you will write one personal statement for each and every university and course that you apply to. So if you're applying to many different courses, that will take quite a lot of work. It will take a reasonable amount of time writing separate personal statements for each and every course that you want to apply to. But all I can recommend in that case is bear that in mind. Make sure that it doesn't come as a surprise in any way. Um, not just that, but the university will also tell you what they want you to write to some extent. They'll provide questions or prompts, usually about two or three per personal statement or per, per university, uh, for you to actually answer in the personal statement itself. Um, yeah, it will be more broader and more open-ended. Yeah, I mean, most people applying to the US uh, to study um, will, uh, will not specialize until far later on. Um, and for that reason, too, there'll be a lot more emphasis on the student's personality. How would they fit in on the campus? Um, what are their interests, their achievements outside of the classroom? But here they do actually care about your sporting achievements, you know, whether you're president of the debating society, uh, things that don't really get you far. For UK universities, they can really work. And um, yeah, they're definitely worth highlighting, in fact, for US university applications instead. Okay, so I hope all of that was clear. As I said, we should have a bit of time for questions later on. Um, so a bit more about my tutoring and educational consulting agency, Threshold Education. Um, so we have over 150 tutors 
Uh, over 50% of our tutors uh, have degrees from either Oxford or Cambridge in the UK. We have many who've attended top US universities as well. Um, and we don't exclusively hire uh, tutors from those backgrounds, but uh, the majority of our tutors are from those backgrounds. Um, they're very experienced in helping a wide range of different students with applications to different universities. So that's not just for UK universities, although we have helped students to gain entrance to both Oxford and Cambridge, as well as many other top universities, um, Imperial, LSE, King's, UCL, just off the top of my head, and plenty of others. Um, we've also, uh, we also have tutors who have helped students to gain entrance to US universities, uh, top US universities, uh, Princeton, uh, John Hopkins, for example, um, and, can and Canadian universities too. We have a wide range of tutors based in different parts of the world. Um, so we cater to many different uh, specialities. Uh, yeah, we have, of course, helped students to gain entrance to universities abroad. And of course, our tutors are familiar with the different steps of the application process as well. Um, so as well as personal statements that could involve, say, interview practice um, or help with preparation for specific admissions tests. Um, and this is something many of our tutors will be extremely well versed in. They'd have done that themselves as part of their own application process. Um, and our tutors have to pass a rigorous selection process to be able to uh, register with us. Uh, we only accept roughly 10% of applicants. Uh, we do have a stringent interview process. Um, our tutors re um, are required to have at least two years of tutoring experience uh, alongside their top degree. Um, so we really do only accept the best, the most capable tutors. Um, in terms of how we could help further, uh, of course, we can help with applications for a wide variety of subjects. So I'll give you the contact details um, later on the next slide. But you would have to tell us, um, of course, which universities you're applying to, which courses, and where you are in the, pro in the process as well, because this is not necessarily the same for everyone. Um, do you just need a bit of help with the personal statement? Do you feel that that would be the most beneficial? Or say, are you applying to Oxbridge and you're worried about the interview as well? You'd like to know a bit more about how that works. Um, and you'd like specific interview preparation and practice too from a tutor who's already been through that process and has helped students to gain admissions to those kinds of universities too. Um, so as I said, we have quite a range of different tutors. Of course, I, I um, help with these um, thoroughly myself too. So we can help with choosing a university or college uh, and guiding you based on our experiences with that as well. Personal statements themselves, um, that would be either in group classes or one-to-one -one classes. Um, we can either set up a group if there's others of a similar level um, who want similar who want similar guidance, or if there's other students um, who are also happy to participate in a group session, um, then that's that's often the easiest um, in our experience. We can set that up as well. Um, interview practice and admissions test preparation as well. So our, our prices vary. They do roughly start from around fifty pounds per hour uh, for tailored online classes. Um, if you're doing group tuition, of course, that price will be split between the number of students. Um, and when I say they they vary, they start from roughly fifty pounds an hour upwards. Um, but it can go to hundred pounds per hour plus for the top tutors. So when you get in touch, of course, make sure to mention what level, of, well, where you are at in the process, what you need help with, um, specifically which courses and universities you're applying to because we have many tutors, so we'd have to match you up with the best, uh, with the most appropriate one. And we have tutors at different price points as well. Uh, we do have tutors at lower price points too. Um, so of course, you need to give us all of that information. And we do offer um, a 10% discount uh, between now and next Wednesday. So if you sign up by the end of Wednesday, 13th of September, that's uh, uh, by midnight on Wednesday, 13th September, UK time, then we'd offer 10% off as well. Right, so I hope this has been very useful. Um, feel free to follow us um, on social media. These are our handles on the various different platforms. So 
If you've got a specific question or query, or if you want to get in touch about further help, then of course, uh, we'd be happy to chat to you. Info at thresholdeducation.com is the easiest way to get in contact. Um, for the social media platforms, so on Instagram, if you type in at Threshold Education, you'd be able to find us as well. Um, on X, formerly known as Twitter, just type in at Thresh Edu. And on Facebook and LinkedIn, our pages should come up if you just type in Threshold Education. So you can follow us particularly for more tips and more advice, especially on Facebook and Instagram. We've already um, we've already posted quite a lot of advice that's uh, particularly useful for university applicants. A checklist for the process, for example, which we could share with you, um, and guidance on how to choose a college and a university, uh, among other things. Um, guidance on how to start and end a personal statement. Uh, we've done a, a reel on that, which is quite fun. Um, so there's all kinds of tips there. So of course you can you can follow us on there, and there'll be lots of uh, free advice and, and content there too.